Hello everyone, I am Vidya. In this session, I am going to discuss about the significance of prime numbers in cryptography. But before we look into the significance, we should first know what is prime number and what is the process of prime factorization. So I have covered what is prime number in detail in my previous video. In this video, I shall be covering the following. First, we will understand what is prime factorization followed by understanding the significance of prime numbers in cryptography. So let us first understand what is prime factorization. So prime factorization is basically a process or a method or a way of writing any composite number as a product of prime numbers. So for that, you should first know what are prime numbers, which I have discussed in my previous video however here i'll just list down a few of the prime numbers within the range of 1 to 20 which are 2 3 5 7 11 13 17 and 19 so we'll be using these prime numbers to see the prime factorization process now you must be thinking why are we learning prime factorization the reason is we we'll require it to ensure the security of any cryptographic algorithm so prime numbers and prime factorization are very important concepts which ensures the security provided by any encryption algorithm let us see the method of prime factorization to begin with let us take the number 12 as i mentioned here on the top prime factorization is the process of writing a composite number as a product of prime numbers and what are the prime numbers between 1 to 20 i have listed here in the bracket so how can you represent 12 as a product of prime numbers so we begin by representing it as first prime number that is 2 so 2 into 2 is 4 and 4 into 3 is 12 so 12 can be represented as 2 square into 3 and therefore 12 is made up of two prime numbers that is 2 and 3. The next question is what is the prime factorization of 18? So I have to represent 18 in the form of prime numbers which is the first prime number I can use it is 2. So 2 into 3 comes out to be 6 and 6 into 3 is 18. So I can represent 18 as 2 into 3 square. So 18 is made up of two prime numbers that is 2 and 3. The next question given is what what is the prime factorization of 20? So 20 has to be represented as a product of prime numbers, which is the first prime number I shall be using that is 2. So 2 into as we all know 2 into 5 is 10 and 10 into 2 will be 20. Therefore 20 can be represented with the help of prime numbers 2 square into 5. Therefore 20 is made up of 2 prime numbers 2 and 5. Let us now see some more examples. Let us now see prime factorization of 24. Now, as we have discussed, prime factorization is the process of representing a number with prime numbers. So, which is the first prime number you will use? 2. So, 2 into 2 is 4, 4 into 2 is 8 and 8 into 3 is 24. So, 24 can be represented as 2 cube into 3. So, 24 is a number which is represented by 2 prime numbers 2 and 3. So, what is the prime factorization of 36? So, 36 can be represented represented as 2 square into 3 square. So 36 is a prime factorization of 2 prime numbers 2 and 3. What is the prime factorization of 126? 126 can be represented with the help of prime numbers as 2 into 3 square into 7. So 126 is represented with 3 prime numbers 2, 3 and 7. Next what is the prime factorization of 240? So 240 can be represented with the prime numbers as 2 raised to 4 into 3 into 5 and therefore 240 is made up of 3 prime numbers 2, 3 and 5. What is the prime factorization of 561? 561 can be represented with prime factors that is 3 into 11 into 7. So 561 is represented with 3 prime factors 3, 11 and 7. So as you have seen any number can be represented as a product of prime numbers and the process of representing of factorizing a number into its prime number is known as prime factorization. So with this let us now see what is the significance of prime numbers and prime factorization in cryptography. To explain this let me take an example. Let me say there is a sender and he has used two large prime numbers 
was denoted as P and Q. Let us assume P is 566557 and Q is 896479. Now, what does the sender do? The sender generates a new number N, which is a product of these two prime numbers. So, he multiplies 566557 with 896479 and gets this answer. Now, he does not send the value of P and Q on the communication channel rather he says this particular value on the communication channel and the communication channel is a public communication channel therefore you also have attackers present on this channel who have an access to this number n which is generated using p and q now here the multiplication process of p and q is very easy so it is computationally easy to multiply p and q but if an attacker wants to find the value of p and q from n he has to do the process of prime factorization so this is where prime factorization comes into picture so if an attacker wants to find out the secret keys p and q he has to factorize the number n and the process of factorizing a large number n into the large large prime numbers p and q is computationally very intensive and a attacker finds it extremely difficult to do this and hence it is very difficult to attack encryption systems which are based on prime number so this is the entire crux of security of encryption systems which are using prime numbers so overall the moral of the story is sender uses large prime numbers p and q to generate n by multiplying p and q and which is computationally easy an attacker who has access to n has to perform prime factorization and this is very computationally intensive or difficult and therefore it is difficult to attack encryption systems based on large prime numbers so this is the entire crux of public encryption systems which are based on prime numbers so an attacker has to perform prime factorization which is extremely extremely difficult and in order to perform prime factorization a sender has to construct the number using prime numbers so this is where a knowledge of prime numbers and prime factorization comes into picture and this is the reason why i have taught you prime numbers and prime factorization in my previous and this video so guys i hope all of you understood the concepts clearly so with this we come to an end of this video in the next video i shall be teaching you the concept of euler torsion which is another important concept which is used in public key encryption algorithm so let us check out this in my next video so thank you guys stay healthy stay happy stay blessed and see you all in my next video